Bandai Namco Entertainment presents with Napro, made with the Unity Engine. All right, what's going on, Guy Nation? I'm your host, FG, and welcome to the Pac-Man Museum Plus. This is an enhanced version of the original Pac-Man Museum released way back when for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Now being made available to modern consoles, such as the console we're playing today, the Nintendo Switch. Not only do we have some classic Pac-Man games from the past, but also some more recent ones, and some that haven't been featured in a compilation yet to date. And the one I'm most excited for here, we finally have the arcade version of Pac-Man Arrangement that was originally featured as part of the Namco Classic Collection Volume 2. There's a lot to offer here, and I'm really excited to finally check it out. But I think what really got people the most excited was the enhanced features here in this Museum Plus. More importantly, this is the first we could see a 3D Pac-Man at least as far as I can tell, way back since Pac-Man World 3. I'm telling you, I want to see either a new version of the game or a remaster. I mean, we almost had something, but more on that later. Anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's just get straight into it. Wow. <laughs> All right, agree, agree. Welcome to Pac-Man Museum Plus. In this arcade, you can use coins to play arcade games. When you want to play a game, move in front of it and select play. The game will then start up. While in the arcade, press the X button to open up the menu. There you can adjust various settings. While in a game, you can open the menu with Y. You can adjust display settings and check the game rules here. Pac-Man Museum Plus, internet, yep, that's fine. Alright, lights on. So here we are. The one thing that got everyone excited is right here. A fully 3D Pac-Man based on its classic design in a 3D environment resembling an arcade. Now to most, this is pretty small, but to uh, a lot of us, including me, this is really exciting to see. I... it looks so good. Control's just as good too. The only thing I can't do is Pac-Man is jump, so it's not Pac-Man World, but... Hey, it's the closest as well to get to the arcade in Pac-Man World too. But let's take a look. We got some arcade games already. Looks like we got some of the uh, different machines, vending machine, jukebox, probably for music. We got this Pac-Man statue, we got the balloons up front. And this is one of the big gimmicks here is the gotcha pump machine, which we need in order to get some new things for the museum. So let's just use it real fast. You can spend coins in the gotcha pump to get random figures. You can freely decorate the arcade with figures in menu and customize. Check out the figures you can get through the gotcha pump in the figure list. So essentially, Museum Plus kind of works as a sort of Typhoon game, where you're able to customize it to your heart's content, so long as you get all the things you need. So it looks like this gotcha pwn has some different figures based on Pac-Man, Silver, Gold, and of course you got the line of ghost characters, Blinky, Inky, Clyde, and Pinky. And it looks like the blue version is known as the Zeke. Hmm. But alright, and we do the full lineup. Okay, we got a little bit of everything. So we got some of the fruits, waka waka. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty cool. And we're already seeing some things that's got a lot of people talking just about the game in general, but we'll get to that later on. So, Alright, we have 500 coins, and we need some of these coins to play the arcade game, so we're not gonna go crazy. If it's five each, let's do. Let's go five hits for now. So let's go once. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's a Golden Clyde! Alright, that's fun. So we already got the first gold figure, which is pretty cool. Let's turn it again, see what else we can get. Gotcha Pwn uh, is an exciting concept down to its own, especially when you're not using real money for it. I mean, I can't name the amount of games where you've had to pay real money microtransactions to get things. I'm glad that they didn't do this in Museum Plus, because I was afraid of that when they first announced it. But alright, we got Blinky, one star. Let's get another turn. I want to see a Pac-Man figure. Pop it open. Oh, Professor Pac-Man! Now that's a classic character. Alright, let's give it another spin. I'll go one more after this. What we got? Pack Sis, silver form. All right, all right, one more time. What's it gonna be? Oh, 
It's a silver inky. All right, that's exciting. All right, we'll stop here because we do need the coins. But all right, we got some stuff. So now if we want to, we can customize. Let's see, is there a way, maybe if I use the vending machine? Okay, yeah. You can spend coins on the vending machine to purchase decorations. Product line increases when you clear missions in each game and changes with each day. If you don't have enough coins, play the games to get more. So this is where we're able to get some things that aren't uh, character based. And we have a little bit of everything so far. Different flags, trash cans, jukebox. Let's see. We already have quite a bit already. At least one of each. I can't see needing any more right now, so we're gonna need to play some games if we want to get some other stuff for the museum. Arcade? Museum? I feel like it's a museum. So, alright. That said, let's see. I don't think we have all the games off the bat. It looks like it's a limited selection right now. But we already have the first one we'll be looking at today, and that's, of course, the original Pac-Man. And this is a game that needs no introduction, but we'll do it anyways. So, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the original Pac-Man. Alright, so picture this. It's the 1980s. Arcade games are still relatively new. And there's been a lot like them that haven't been very different. Of course, the big players are games like Pong, Asteroids, so on and so forth. It wouldn't be until 1978 where a company named Taito would make a game called Space Invaders. And this is a game that would not only set a standard moving forward what an arcade game could be, but also the amount of quality that, that, that could go into one. It was a big deal. And so many other companies had to follow up with that standard. And Namco was no different. It was clear that they would need a game of their own that could rival the likes of something like Space Invaders. And there were some other games before Pac-Man. As a matter of fact, when Pac-Man was first unveiled, it was revealed alongside Rally X. For those that don't know Rally X, it's another Namco game that involves uh, race cars, formula cars, and smoke. But believe it or not, they actually thought that Rally X was going to be more popular than Pac-Man. But I don't think anyone was expecting it. Because as of today, 2022, Pac-Man is still recognized as the most successful coin-op arcade game to date. Which is a pretty big deal, all things considered. And this game alone is what would put Namco on the radar here in the in the West. So people knew the Namco name, but licensing back then was actually done by Midway. And that's actually something very significant moving forward with Pac-Man history, as we'll be seeing later on. Because the control, the decisions that Midway made were pretty different compared to what Namco made. And that includes control over some of the later games. That said though, let's get into the gameplay and see what the original Pac-Man is all about. Alright, here we go, Pac-Man. Now, one of my favorite things about Museum Plus is that for the very first time, and you'd be surprised that they didn't do anything like it in previous Namco Museums or Pac-Man compilations, we have arcade accurate bezels. Bezels are the artwork that's displayed when you look inside the cabinet, what's against the screens. So what we see right here is the actual bezel artwork that was used in an American Pac-Man cabinet, which includes the Western version of Pac-Man. Now, Midway thought that the original design of Pac-Man, complete with red boots and orange gloves, wouldn't appeal to the American audience. To that, I say blasphemy, but it was clear that they wanted something different. And so that was the origin of this Pac-Man design. It's derpy, it's weird, and it feels out of place, but there's plenty of other weird designs that could take the crown on that one. It works for what it was, and this was the face of Pac-Man for the longest time here in the West. This is what many people associated with Pac-Man when it first came out. It's iconic as it should be, but I gotta say I prefer the original Japanese version of Pac-Man. Where over there, of course, he was known as Puckman. But let's talk about the ghosts. We have Shadow, Speedy, Bashful, and Pokey. Better known as Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. Now, you'd be surprised, but although we know them as ghosts, they weren't meant to be ghosts. They were actually more so recognized as monsters. Why this is important, we'll recognize later in one of the other games we'll be covering here in this uh, Let's Play of Pac-Man Museum Plus, but it's worth mentioning. That said, let's get straight into the gameplay. Insert coin, 
and you can see it just it ate the coin. That's why we need our coins. <laughs> but all right, you know it well. Let's hear it. A jingle that will never get old. All right, so if by any chance you don't know about Pac-Man, let me explain a little bit. You play as the titular character Pac-Man, a yellow blob in a maze full of dots being chased by monsters, the four iconic ghosts as we know them today. And the objective is to get through the maze eating all the pellets, which later on they would become canonically known as cookies, keeping with the food theme Pac-Man and avoiding the ghost. Now, Pac-Man doesn't have anything up his sleeve normally, but he is able to counter the ghost in the form of the power pellets. There's always four pellets in each stage, and when you eat them, the ghosts become vulnerable, turning blue. When they're blue, you're able to gobble them all up one by one and send them back to their little hub in the middle. If you complete a stage, it's as easy as that. You do it again. This is, all things considered, a very basic arcade game for the era it came through. So you're probably wondering what made it so popular. Well, the very first thing is because of its art style. We have a lot of colors on display here between blue. Ah, Blue, yellow, red, pink, orange. And all these bright colors were there to garner the attention of those passing by in the arcade. By seeing the colors, it would have them, like, it piqued their interest. It's a very colorful game, compared to the other games coming out that were simply just white or green or anything of that contrast. So it was made to capture attention. The biggest reason, though, was the addictive gameplay. And part of that is the genius of the designs of the ghost. Every ghost in Pac-Man is made to behave in a different way. Blinky will always chase you when he sees you. Pinky will try to get one step ahead of you and cut you off. Inky is a bit of a wild card where he could do one of the two compared to the other ghost. And Clyde's just Clyde. That said though, once you complete a couple of stages, you get what is known as a coffee break, which is a quick little cutscene that plays and lets you see what's happening in the world of Pac-Man. The very first one right there is absolutely iconic, as it has any right to be. So yeah, Pac-Man, it's honestly still holds up really well today. As far as the replayable factor, of course, you're gonna get hooked on it just because of its gameplay. But when you compare it to other stuff, especially the later Pac-Man games, it's not gonna be the one that most people flock to nowadays. It's there for what it was, but it's clear that there's still plenty of other versions that could come out. Many different formulas, per se, on the Pac-Man formula. But I don't even think they knew, especially the creator, Iwatani, just how big of a game this was gonna be. And even when it came to the marketing, Pac-Man made a huge splash here in the West. And there was merchandise on almost everything you can name. One of the biggest, of course, was music, where they had an iconic uh, music song, uh, Buckner Garcia, Pac-Man Fever. Again, Pac-Man became a huge staple of the 80s and early 90s. Something like that, to come from a video game of all things, was almost unheard of at the time. That was the power of Pac-Man, and what would soon be the rise of the arcade industry. Pac-Man was one of those forerunners, thanks to its success, and even before that, Space Invaders. And as Namco would continue on to make more and more games after Pac-Man, such as Galga, Dig Dug, to name a couple, video games were becoming what we know them as today. So Pac-Man's legacy is long-rooted, and part of that success is thanks to just how popular Pac-Man became. But of course, there's still plenty of other games out there. Donkey Kong, for example, that's what made Nintendo so popular. And then later on, eventually the arcade would change as we know it. But Pac-Man, even after all these years, is still every bit recognizable compared to other brands such as Mickey Mouse, for example. It's crazy to think about. All right, we're already one, two, three, four, five stages in. If I can beat this one, we'll get another coffee break. But I believe that's everything I wanted to say about the original Pac-Man, so let's just see how high of a score we can get on this one. Ah. 
Honestly, I don't find myself going to the original Pac-Man all that much. As I mentioned earlier, I think there are better versions of the game out there, especially the ones we'll be looking at later in this uh, Let's Play of Pac-Man Museum Plus. But I don't think you can really pass down the significance of the game and just how much of an impact it would have on everything as we know it. And then of course we got the fruit that spawned in the middle to give you bonus points, but that's the best I could do. Now, if you really spend some time and study the genius of its design, the ghost and the way they move, its overall design appeal. For example, one of the most popular stories about Pac-Man is that his conception was from a pizza. By taking out a slice, there was this stroke of genius of coming up with this character that wants to eat food. Now, some have debunked it whether it's true or not, but hey, everyone likes a story. But that said, that's the original Pac-Man, so let's use the menu. And I wanna see the missions. Play Pac-Man two times, 5,000, 10,000. Okay, we almost came close to 20,000. I'm not planning on trying to complete it all in full, but I wanna try to take out as many of the missions as I can. And a lot of them do look like they're just based on gameplay. So getting a high score, completing so many rounds, eating as much ghosts as possible. So, there is uh, some merit to it. And they said that you complete missions, you'll get some stuff. So, we're going to try to get as much done as we can. So, if we play Pac-Man one more time, it looks like we will get something out of it. So, let's just play it one more time and see what we unlock. So, insert coin and start. To talk a little bit though about the original Japanese Pac-Man design and the Midway design that we see here. I don't know what Midway was thinking, if it was because maybe like the cuteness of the character that because the original Pac-Man, you look at the artwork for the Puckman cabinet, he does have that cutesy design to him, and it definitely appeals to the Japanese audience. And I know there is that uh, stereotype where those in the West love things that are much more mature, hardcore, I guess is the best way to put it. And I wonder though, would that have had that much of an impact on the success of Pac-Man had they stuck with that original Japanese design? I don't know. It wouldn't be until the next game though that they would bring a similar design to it, but it would still be different. I don't think there ever really was an instance in the arcade back when where they did use that Japanese design here in the West. I want to say the only thing would be Pac-Mania if we're not counting Pac-Man arrangements. Otherwise, I don't think they ever really did stick to that traditional design. They always went with the Midway design. As not to knock the success of the Midway design because, again, it still is just as popular as the Japanese design. But it's clear that when you compare something like this to something that I think is a little more recognizable, especially because of his other appearances, I think the one that a lot of people will know especially is because of Pac-Man's appearance in Super Smash Bros. That's using his classic Puck-Man design. I just think it's a really cool design because it tones to the cartoon appearance that is Pac-Man. It feels like it's meant to be more of a cartoon, I suppose. Though it's not to say that there hasn't been other artist renditions or other imaginings over time. There are some that really doubled down on the ghosts being monsters and Pac-Man being this, um... I don't know what you call it, spirit, justice, so on. One of my personal favorites, though, is actually a YouTuber named Terminal Montage that did, uh, I think it was a Halloween special or something, but it was more of a horror take on Pac-Man. That was cool to see that iteration. But anyways, that's two times, so let's see the mission. Yep, okay. And return to the arcade. What do I get? Five tokens? That's it? Okay, it's gonna take a long time to get a lot of tokens. You can now play Super Pac-Man. Okay, yeah, so you do need to continue playing Pac-Man cabinet, so you can do more than one. We got a pot, another cabinet, another, oh, that's a lot of cabinets. Pac-Man and Ghost A wallpaper. Oh, we got a rocking horse. Okay, that's fun. Cabinets. We got an extra cabinet. It looks like Pack attack Dots in the maze, uh, background music. Five missions cleared, a new visitor has stopped by the air. Oh, okay, so we can actually get more people instead of Pac-Man. 
I wonder if we can control them. Nope. Okay, Blinky's just there. All right, we got Blinky, though. That's cool. We have guests in the arcade. 